I take my seat in row 69 at Red Rocks next to my Aunt Mercy. The woman sitting next to us leans forward. Does it go off road? She asks. I reply instantly without thought or hesitation. No, but my other walker does, and it is great in the Colorado terrain. I feel a smile spread across my face as we both lean back onto the bench and return to taking in the Michael Franti concert. I just owned a part of me that I have been resisting and struggling against. Chatting about disability as casually as I would answer where I bought my t-shirt feels freeing. I feel proud and I feel the peace and the excitement of this win. I have come so far. It hasn't always been this way. I grew up thinking vulnerability was weakness and that I needed to avoid it at all costs or die. Then I did die. I am surrounded by light that has no beginning and no end. It's coming from all directions at once, bright, warm, and beautiful. Without a doubt, I know that this is heaven. The calm, peace, and unconditional love. Love that I cannot earn nor can I do anything to lose. There is absolutely no worry or fear. I'm aware that I have a physical body, but it feels like I am submerged in perfectly still water. Pain does not exist. I know with every cell of my body that everything is okay, that I don't have to worry, fear, or even doubt. The love and comfort feels so good. I am completely held. I have never felt anything like it before in my 35 years of life. You have been asking me the same three questions for over two hours, my husband Josh says in a very annoyed tone. He's jumpy and he's very stressed. You were dead. You were blue and unresponsive. The nurse did chest compressions and everyone came running. They were breathing for you for a very long time. You didn't wake up for a very long time. I was afraid you weren't coming back. Going into the routine surgery, I had hip pain, but I had full use of my leg. But now the pain is unbearable. I'm back on earth, back but with lots more pain, searing nerve pain. It feels like my foot is being roasted in a fire. There's intense itching. And now my leg has new weakness. I cannot lift it off the bed. It feels like too much. I shift into survival mode. Just breathe. Just make it to the next second. I am struggling. I feel angry and sad, and really, I'm devastated. But I don't share because sharing feels feelings feels unsafe, so I don't. And there's something familiar to it all, the survival mode. I am five. I'm shaking as I scramble to get out of reach. His hands are coming for me. They grab wildly under the desk. You'll get what's coming to you, he says. I can smell the beer on his breath. I pull my legs in tighter to stay out of my dad's reach. I am afraid. I'm sad. I'm angry, but I can't show it. He catches me and he starts hitting me. I turn off all emotions, showing him that it hurts, that I'm sad and that I am pissed makes it last longer and makes the hits harder. I learn that hiding, hiding who I am, hiding emotions, hiding weakness and vulnerability is the only way to survive. And I just need to stay safe. So I gulp down all the rest. I'm 36 years old, eight months since my near-death experience. The airport is crowded. 
Through the tears in my eyes, I see chunks of half-eaten food. The carpet is disgusting. But I'm in so much pain that the only thing I could think to do was lay down on the ground underneath all the chairs that are connected together. Before disability, I easily traveled to Haiti on mission trips and served the communities as a pediatrician. But now I can't do this. I physically cannot get myself through the airport, but I don't dare ask for help. I tell my friend in Haiti, I don't know how I can get there. And even if I do get there, I'm not sure how I can get up the hill to the school. Jackson casually replies, don't worry, Dr. Amy, we'll put you in a wheelbarrow and we will wheel you up the hill. I'm hit by emotion. And I don't know how to allow any of the emotions. And so I push all of them down. Not being able to do it feels like I am a failure and that I am weak. I am 40 years old. I am at the pain clinic. The nurse care manager is sitting in front of me. How are you doing, Trisha? Kindly ask me. Usually I would just say, fine, but I can't do this anymore. But I can't speak my truth either. So I hand her my journal entry and she starts to read. Pain dominates all my mental power all the time. I barely steal away brief moments. The weakness in my leg is a lot and it's showing up in everything, in bathing, in walking, and in helping around the house. I haven't found peace or acceptance. I am trying to do it all by myself. Trisha stops reading. You should work with Carol, our pain psychologist. I set up the appointment. Working with her and many other caring humans fills my tool, toolkit with real ways to navigate pain and disability. And this changes everything. Prior to this, my toolkit had a carrot, a paper clip, a couple of sticks, and it turns out none of that was helpful. I still struggle with accepting that it is my truth, that I need help to get around, that I need the pain clinic, and that it takes a lot of maintenance, maintenance care and therapy to even survive. But I want to thrive. And I am admitting that I am not thriving, that I am far from it. Now, I allow people to push me in the wheelchair. I use my walker and my walking sticks instead of letting disability keeping letting dis, letting disability keep me at home and i tell people my needs even around disability i'm 43 years old i am at red rocks michael is singing so we can love deeper fly higher see clearer burn brighter feel more than we ever did before we can swim oceans climb mountains, dance like nobody's watching, live life like we never did before, through the highs and the lows. His words fill my heart. I couldn't agree more. I showed up with my walker. I advocated for my needs and I am not hiding disability. Knowing I don't have to like it, but I don't need to push against it either. I learned it is exhausting to fight against what's true. I stopped resisting and struggling. I started feeling the feels. I started celebrating and finding joy in all that is around me and in all that is in me. Taking in the vibes at this outdoor concert on the most perfect night at Red Rocks Amphitheater is surreal. It is heaven on earth. Peace, love, light, and knowing that everything will be okay through the highs and the lows. The scared five-year-old figured out what seemed right at the time, what kept her safe, hiding, not sharing, being small. But now I am 43 and it no longer serves me. 
I choose to step into being vulnerable and staying connected to myself and to my surroundings. I choose to love myself unconditionally and to be that to the world. I choose to accept disability for what it is in this moment. I won't let it or anything else take away my thriving. This vulnerability is my superpower and it has unlocked amazing magical parts of me and of the world around me. And I am thriving.